Swirly flashback noises. Swirly flashback noises. You're listening to Fix My Car Cast, hosted by Bear Claw Billy. This is episode 26, and if you're wondering why I sound like this, it's COVID week and talking sucks. Yes, I got COVID, finally. Just what I always wanted. Anyway, I sound terrible but also typing all this out is a pain, so we're doing a clip show. You're going to hear exactly 60 seconds of every episode prior to this one. Yeehaw. By the way, no new donors, no new patrons. Please throw some money at the links below to help pay off my car repairs and to pick a topic for the show. Rock on. All right. Clip show activate. Episode 1. I'm at a crosswalk right now. Hi, everybody. And welcome to Fix My Car Cast. I'm Bear Claw Billy, and you're listening to the only podcast that's recorded while I walk from my job to my home because my car is broken. Of course, I want to remind you up top that we're sponsored by Fix My Car. Uh, there's a GoFundMe. Uh, there's a link somewhere. Wherever you're listening to this, I'm sure there's a link. So uh, please get down there and uh, help me fix my car. Now, why do I need help fixing my car? Well, for starters... Uh, is broken and it keeps breaking things keep breaking on it we'll get a new car you might say oh no we're not ready for that yet uh it's still doing kind of okay but uh you know there's a lot of brand new stuff on it it would be quite foolish to just throw it out so we've got to keep it uh i do want to reiterate that this is quite literally being recorded as i walk home um so you're gonna get all of that maybe we'll have some special guests who knows you know one time a comedian told me that if I ever hosted a podcast, we'd never get around to the guest. Episode 2. I just dropped my umbrella. Star Trek Discovery was originally pitched um, as a horror series set in the Star Trek universe. And I'm all for that. I wish they had done that. Fun fact, the serial number on the Discovery is 1031. Which is Halloween. They did that on purpose because it was supposed to be a horror series. And then when the show finally got made, whoops, they forgot to change that. So now it just randomly has the date of Halloween stamped on it. And I think that's pretty funny because if they ever decide to do that idea again, that's taken. Because you know Trekkies, we can't have any continuity errors. So sorry, Halloween ship is taken even though the Halloween ship is now the one that... I don't know, spoilers if you ever watch Discovery. It gets better. You know. Episode 3. All right. Going down a side street. As evidenced by how crappy my improv is. I'm sweating my face off. Trying to go... Trying to go home. Oh my gosh. This is... This is a part of the commute. Where my brain stops working. It's a very sunny day offsetting that is the fact that it's a very windy day but i'm almost home when i get home i think i'm gonna eat a lobster roll or that or make burritos i don't know what i'm gonna do um so anyway if you want to write the assassination of zobert remekis feel free that's a free idea there you go make that I think we've never really seen assassination and Hollywood come together like this, except for Barry. Oops. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe that'll be a plot point on Barry. Episode 4. Mr. X is giving me a ride to work. Uh, It's going to be a short one because I have a ride today. Um, I think he's mainly ignoring me. I did warn him I'd be doing all this crap um, on the I, way this morning. I, I, I just I'm waiting for a, like, a signal to like start talking. I don't I don't know. Uh, oh, I, I don't know what to do. Oh no, I I was just gonna let you ignore me like you do most of the time, <laughs> um, if you so choose. Um, yeah, no, I'll kick it over to you. So yeah, this is this is strange because it'll be the first episode of this show where I'm not wheezing the whole time. Um, and it's also going to be pretty short. So, uh, I guess I'll have to think of a topic. Um, but we are now in the vehicle, if that's okay to say. Um, what, do you, what do you call my car? Um, I don't do have, you have a, a nickname for my car. I do not have a name for your car. Um, I, I, do you? I don't because... I think I think children should be named by other people and not their own parents. Ah. Uh, Episode five: Different kinds of time travel. Been 
a little weird to me, but I get why it exists. Our sponsor, Dogs, is just all over this show today. Good morning, dog. Um, so, let me catch my breath and try to do a little quicker rundown. Alternate, great for fish out of water in a different time period. Historical drama, you know, romances. Very good for romances if you want to send your... Hey, buddy. If you want to send your protagonist back in time to hook up with Shakespeare, but you don't want that to accidentally erase all of Shakespeare's plays, go alternate. However, if you do want to erase all of Shakespeare's plays, go mutable. And if you want to reveal that you actually wrote Shakespeare's plays as they exist right now, go immutable. I can't believe I've never used that example before, but it is perfect. So yeah, there's a succinct way to differentiate your timelines. Episode 6. Be nice to the AFI 100 comedies. Haven't seen it. Father of the Bride. Oh, looks like the original. Haven't seen it. Lost America. Haven't seen it. Dinner Date. Haven't seen it. City Slickers? Yeah, I saw that. Whatever. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Haven't seen that. Need to get around to it. It's high on my list. Beetlejuice, whatevs. The Jerk, I like it. Woman of the Year, haven't seen. The Heartbreak Kid, I haven't seen. Ball of Fire, I haven't seen. Fargo, it's a good one. Auntie Mame, haven't seen. Silver Streak, I think I saw Silver Streak edited for TV when I was like 12. Mm, shouldn't see it that way. Sons of the Desert, haven't seen. Bull Durham, saw part of it on TV, whatever. The Court Jester, have not seen it. The Nutty Professor with Jerry Lewis, not Eddie Murphy, have seen it. Remember laughing at it as a kid? wild that it made the list because I feel like it's regarded as a lesser Jerry Lewis maybe not I don't know it was it was after he broke up with um uh what's his name the not funny one <laughs> gosh don't do a podcast while you're walking to work it's a bad idea episode seven talking Star Wars in the rain so glub shitto even the story behind how he came about is great um when they were shooting the Ridge war of the stars they ran out of alien outfits like you know i'd I'd love to be on a on a team for like making costumes and weird aliens and stuff it just sounds like such a cool job but inevitably there's a crunch time where they're like we are running out of stuff and so towards the end they were just like going to toy stores and costume shops and just saying whatever that give me that and just like squishing it all together and this is absolutely true Glub Shitto, <laughs> which, yes, his name does sound, it is spelled like it sounds. <laughs> Glub Shitto. <laughs> um, I don't know how they got away with that. Um, Glub Shitto was made from a Donald Duck mask with the hat cut off. Episode 8 It's a Science Experiment. But that's kind of the point of this podcast. I don't know. I'm making it up as I go. Honestly, everything I do creatively the last few years is me waking up and saying, it's impossible to survive in America. In what ways can I creatively and demeaningly earn money? Because I ain't good at a whole heck of a lot. It feels good to say it out loud, which maybe is weird saying it feels good to say that America is broken and maybe always has been. And I am being throttled by capitalism. And instead of throwing my body on the gears, on the levers and making the machine stop, I am instead saying, I've got a wild idea. What if the machine could fart? Episode nine, the sky walks into the talent agency. And I'm like, yeah, this is a very delicate thing. Like, you don't want to spoil the appeal of the act. And he's like, well, the appeal of the act is that it is unappealing. Like, that's the whole point. Like, I want us to make the most unappealing act of all time. And I want two shitty libertarian magicians to make a documentary about what we've made today. And I'm like, what, what, are, you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? This is... I am so confused. I am so confused right now. What's happening? What? What? Stop. I tell him, you know what? Stop. Stop. Let's all just, let's all just take a break. 
I ate some of that lady's penis. You are bleeding from your anus. And also definitions are trickling out of your ass. I see a diarrhea-covered discombobulation right there. Episode 10, when I knew that I love performing. Um, you know, whenever people ask, like, what's your secret? What are your techniques? How do you keep your mind and body sharp? Um, and to that I can say, when I was a kid, I didn't know that Mystery Science Theater was scripted. Um, and I realize I may be talking to people who don't know what some of these shows are. Mystery Science Theater is a show where a guy and some puppets talk over movies. Whose Line Is It Anyway is an improv show. Everything's made up and the points don't matter. Though I don't think that was the tagline until Carrie, and I was a Clive Anderson era. Um, Yeah, that's right, Tony Slattery. That guy, Mike McShane. I think Mike McShane was on the Drew one. Um, Anyway, so I think what really blew my mind was the day I learned that Whose Line Is It Anyway was not scripted. Like, I remember my parents just telling me, like, no, they're just making it up off the top of their heads. Episode 11, That Pirate Show on HBO Max. Um, We've reached the point where exercise is throttling my brain. What were we talking about? Oh, yes, our flag means death. OFMD, which every time I see that abbreviation on Twitter, I think they mean, get the OnlyFans, doctor. OFMD. Um, God, it's such a clunky title. (laughs) I didn't think I'd spend so much time on the title, but, like... Everyone abbreviates it when they talk about it. And, like, that's how you know you got a clunky title when nobody says the full thing. Um, And it's, like, right in the middle where it's four words. So it's not so clunky as to be a huge problem. And O-F-M-D and our flag means death. Same number of syllables. You're doing a great job reviewing this show, Bear Claw Billy. Keep it up. Why, if I were a second person, I'd pat you on the back... And lick your butt a little bit. Just the buttocks, not down the middle. I know what I'm about. Today's show is sponsored by dogs. Here comes some now. Episode 12, A Certain Stretchy Superhero. I think the villain of Stretch Armstrong was Vac-Man. Um, and Vac-Man was way cooler because here's the deal. When his limbs stretched out, are you sitting down? They stayed that way. That's right. That's a truck. There was some mechanism, I'm going to guess it used vacuums, that if you stretched out Vacman's limbs, they stayed stretched out. And to me, this was a game changer. Because here's the thing. Wait, no. Here's Mr. Fantastic. No, wait. Here's Stretch Armstrong. (laughs) The comedy keeps coming. Can you believe how talented I am? You gotta give me at least 50% as talented as comedian and musician Keith Hebert, who you really ought to be telling about this show so he can show up on time to be a guest. Okay. I hate everything. That's not true. Episode 13, all the films of James Cameron. Back to Jim Cameron. What else did he make? Um, oh, it should be said, probably some underwater documentaries with pretentious titles. I want to say Lords of the Abyss and Songs of the Deep. Sure, those sound right. Did he make two? I feel like he made two. I've seen one of them. I couldn't tell you which one. And I definitely watched it because I had just eaten some special chocolate. So winning my special chocolate award is one of them James Cameron fish movies. Um, A real one, not a fake one. (sighs) I realized as I said that, oh wait. I'm not talking about Piranha 2, which is fictional, as near as I can tell, but in fairness, haven't seen it. The fog is gorgeous this morning. I feel like maybe I need to get a pick for the patrons, but that also entails turning off airplane mode. Episode 14, a trans reading of the film The Batman. It's all legitimate. Good. Whoo. I almost scared myself there. Oh, I see the sign now. Entering Click Clack Town. This is gonna get messy. Time to get out my laser weapon and cock it. And it's gonna make a really loud, really technological sound. Here I go, ready? 
Yeah, wow. Oh, back off, cyber mutt. I got work to do here today. It's time to take out the trash. Hey, I said it's time. Hey, I said it's time to take out. Okay, now I'm out of breath. You messed up my timing. That's why I can't trust robots, even robot dogs and their fake looking butts. All right, this must be the joint. I'm going in hot. Episode 15, all about NFTs. You're, you're, you're a genius, Nicholas, because I was like, this isn't that hard, but I'm loudly talking about NFTs while strangers can see me doing that. And now I'm like, oh no, they're assuming what kind of person I am from the subject matter that I'm discussing quite loudly. But no, 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 really, really. Let's get into it. So let's uh, tell you a little bit about the history of NFTs, which we, uh, we really can't get into without talking about uh, Ray Norda, N-O-O-R-D-A, Ray Norda. So, so what you need to know about Ray Norda is that he owned the Canopy Group, uh, which he had founded in 1992 uh, through the Norda Family Trust. And one of its holdings, Caldera, purchased the Unix assets in 1995 from the Santa Cruz operation, which had acquired them from Novell. In 1996, it also acquired the digital research assets from Novell and immediately brought a lawsuit against Microsoft. Episode 16, Percival's of Acclaim. An influential British socialist organization that aims to advance the principles of democratic socialism via gradualist and reformist effort in democracies. Boy, that guy's ideas are going to go nowhere. Anyway, bless you, Percival Chubb, born in 1860. 1860, but I heard socialism was a new idea invented on TikTok. Weird. Anyway, so that's Percival Chubb, who is... I didn't find anything, like, super noteworthy on his page, other than sounding like a pretty rockin' dude. Um, But uh, Percival Chubb is here strictly for the name. Um, Who is your favorite Percival? Sound off in the comments below. Are you in the Chubb Club? Are you in the Galahad, uh, Galamad, because his name used to be Percival? There we go. I always bring it together, friends. I always bring it together. Um, Let's look at some other Percivals. Episode 17, The Word Battle Saga. Took a little bit different approach on this one. I just had people submit words that I had to use in a song. Uh, it was very few. Um, I think I only got like 10 words. And so, um, without further ado, here is a billion cockroach legs. Looking good? Check. Feeling good? Also check. Let's go. Uploading beats to sound cloud and alley hoopa. I shred more lettuce than you got on your chalupa. You can call me Al Capone, cause I speak easy. Lyrics leave my lips and the ladies wanna please me. I got charm and lots of space on each arm. If there's a fire down below, then let me hear the alarm. So come over here and whisper something nasty. You get my blood flowing like an angioplasty. So rock hard, it must be clobber o'clock. And when I say rock hard, I'm referring to my music. Got more super girls than Comic Con, and I'm surrounded by wetness like to notch titlon. I bet it over 9,000. Episode 18. Canadian air. Um, so there you go. That's two airing of two Canadian grievances. Um, number three. <laughs> this one is so random. Okay. So I once had a friend tell me that Canada cannot make good pizza. Uh, no matter where you go in Canada, the pizza sucks. Um, and my friend kind of said this as though this is a known thing. Like people are just aware that Canadian pizza sucks. Um, And I think just my friend went to one restaurant in Canada that had bad pizza, made that assumption on an entire nation, and acted like everyone knows this. I don't even remember the friend that told me Canadian pizza is bad, but I want to air this out right now. Is like, is this anything you've heard? Any of my listeners, if you've heard that Canadian pizza is bad, get in the comments. Now, I'm wondering if this is based on Canadian bacon, which is delicious... And they just call it ham. Episode 19. Beatbox all the way to work. Beatbox all the way to work? You got it. Oh, 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 oh. 
Episode 20, that She-Hulk trailer. And like, She-Hulk was like the OG Deadpool. Um, she broke the fourth wall all the time. Um, and that was just, that was just normal. That was just part of the character. Like, there's some great fourth wall breaking. Like, she... All right, well, okay. Uh, it looks like I'm circling the uh, parking lot for a bit because there's no free pumps. Um, so, She-Hulk... Um, like, she she breaks the fourth wall, but, like, in interesting ways that, like, poke fun at comic comic book conventions. Um, not Comic-Con, but, like, you know, the, the writing conventions. Um, uh, one of my favorites that I feel like doesn't get enough love is uh, there's, there's a panel where she's, like, trying to figure out who's behind a nefarious plot. And she says, like, she says, like, ah, I hate that it's going to take me the whole issue when you're probably going to meet them on the next page. And, like, I love that so much. I love that so much. Episode 21. These darn gas prices. Just go, man, go. Let's not stop. Time time waits for no one. Tom waits for some. Not for me, though. Can't stand that guy. And coming through on my hands of the glory of love. <coughs> And that's called being a genius. What the hell do I know? That guy's got money and I don't. You know what? This is officially now a podcast where I get Tom Waits to pay off my car repairs. Tom Waits, if you're listening, motherfucker, you're the big get. Forget Keith Hebert. Don't. He's fine. He's a good man, probably. I don't know that much about him other than he told me that I shouldn't have a podcast. And he was right. You shouldn't have a podcast. I'm your drunk uncle. Something about hookers. I'm a sad, sad cigarette of a man. Episode 22. Their minimum plot motivators. He gets the magical jewel of sex. Whatever, whatever fucking thing, you know. Here, I got this for you for your sex cult. Uh, you rich maniac, here you go. And he shows up at the doorstep of whatever guy is paying him to go get this thing. And he's like just covered in blood and he's missing a finger and he's just like panting and he's got like burns and ashes and he's just... (sighs) And the rich guy is like, did you get it? And he's like, yeah, I got it. And he takes out a satchel. And he dumps it out in front of him. And the magical jewel of sex rolls out onto the rug. This guy has a really nice rug. And then the rich maniac says, Very well. You've done well today. You deserve this. At which point, he reaches into his rich maniac robe and he pulls out. Episode 23. I make a lot to music. Episode 24, Approaching Folk Song Status. There's a very famous panel um, where a very sad girl is having a bad day. And Superman gives her a hug and tells her that her doctor was held up. She didn't blow her off. And he says to her, it's never as bad as it seems. And I got very mad at Superman. (laughs) Because I was like, I don't know, Superman. You give me hope. You're like one of the hope symbols that I turn to. And I was just like, kind of is as bad as it seems, Superman. 
The government doesn't do anything to stop the atrocities that are killing people. And just... I'm driving around, just trying to get to a beach. Just need to recharge my soul. Episode 25. Thank you for joining us, Stephen King. I don't think that there are any giant rats. No farting corpses and no giant rats. That is so comforting. Now I can die in peace. Stephen, who's the best Spider-Man? Maguire. What species is Gizmo? Maguire. What do you drink cocoa out of? Mag Boy, this is fun. I could do this for hours. I have 100 more questions. Then I'd like to stop before it turns into uh, a kind of self-parodying exercise. Excellent observation, Mr. King. Brevity is the soul of wit. Less is more. Make it quick. Would you feel that way about your first sexual experience? All right. Enough. Thank you for joining us, Stephen King. Will you tell people about this episode? Nah. I didn't like the ending. Fair enough. Well, thank you to the listeners for bearing with this weird experimental COVID week edition of Fix My Carcass with Bear Claw Billy. As always, milk in the refrigerator takes the flavor of whatever's next to it.